Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope you're doing well. It's time for another This Week in Fragrance. It's been a while since I've done one of these. For a while there, we were getting new releases like every other day it felt like, and now we've hit a, a dead spot. I'm not sure exactly how long it's been since there were a bunch of fragrances to announce. I feel like it's been a month or more. So today, we've got a new Versace release, a new Hugo Boss release, uh, not really a new Dior release. I'll just touch on that really quickly. And of course, a new Initio release. And some of these have already been talked about because some of them have made their way to other people. And I'll let you know that as well in case you want to check out some more info on them. So let's jump into this. And today's video is sponsored as usual by FragranceUSA.com. They really do sponsor most of the This Week in Fragrance videos at this point, and I really appreciate it. We've got a link in the description to their website, Fragrance USA. If you use the code GENT15, you'll save yourself 15% off anything on the website. They've got great prices on niche fragrances and designer fragrances, fast shipping, everything is completely authentic. So make sure to check them out if you're in the market for any of the fragrances that they carry and use my code to save a little bit of money. Thanks again, Fragrance USA. Now the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the new Dior release. And I actually have a video upcoming here in the near future where I go into more detail on this. So be on the lookout for that if you wanna see it, but it's Dior Ohm original and actually it's been out in Europe for a while. I think I talked about this uh, quite a while back. Uh, I think it was announced last year and I talked about it then and it came out in Europe. Still hasn't touched down in the US as far as I'm aware. But Dior Homme original, it's the original Dior Homme. The note breakdown so far is pretty simple. Iris cardamom vetiver. I'm just gonna leave it at that because like I said, I've already filmed a video talking about this one and also Dior Homme 2020, and that video will be out pretty soon. So let's talk about the new Initio. It's Oud for Happiness. Yes, Oud for Happiness. You had Oud for Greatness, that was a big hit, and what is a brand to do when they have a big hit on their hands? Make a flanker. Now I think the brand sent this out to some people already, so there are some reviews of this one already, uh, but I'm still gonna go over the, the whole breakdown and everything. Happiness is a state of well-being and contentment, an enjoyable, profoundly satisfying experience, a feeling that is usually associated with the goal. Therefore, it has an extraordinary meaning for our subconscious. Initio Oud for Happiness is a way to experience happiness. Initio, the pioneers of functional fragrances, open the door to a unique world of perfumes in which emotions are triggered by science in combination with spiritual and magical ingredients. That's kind of a lot to unpack there. Pioneers of functional fragrances. Okay. I would assume by that they mean fragrances that are functional, as in usable, wearable. Uh, I think those existed before Initio. I, I could be wrong, but... So apparently they utilize science, spirituality, and magical ingredients, a la Harry Potter, to give you fragrances that are functional. I don't even... I mean, we have some weird write-ups that we talk about on this series, you know, fragrance brands. And I, I get it, you gotta sell your stuff. You gotta make it sound awesome. But at the same time, it's kind of funny. Initio, pioneers of alchemy. <laughs> the Black Gold Project combines the power of Oud with sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is based on symbols that carry a universal energy and strong vibrations. These symbols contain the power of manifestation, which is why they are also called Magical symbols. Based on the principles of sacred geometry, the tree of life has the power to create abundance. It symbolizes the connection between the fertility of the earth and heaven. The first fragrance, Oud for Greatness, has meanwhile set standards in terms of Oud, a reference in the world of Haut Perfumery. We've got magical ingredients, we have science in combination with spirituality. We have sacred geometry with universal energy, strong vibrations, the power of manifestation, magical symbols, all this stuff. The tree of freaking life, the tree of life. 
is in this fragrance. What the f This one has a top of bergamot and ginger and made of oud and licorice and a base of vanilla and musk. So there's that one. Honestly though, it probably smells awesome. It, it's just like, the, the path that we took to get there was a winding one. Up next, Boss Bottled Golden Edition. Boss Bottled Golden Edition invites you to celebrate in gold with the luxurious Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum Collectors Limited Edition. That is a mouthful. A classic Eau de Parfum scent encased in a sparkling golden bottle to awaken the magic of the festive season. Don't worry, when they say magic here, they're talking about just uh, an overall feeling. They're not talking about like fireball, magic missile. Created for driven, ambitious men ready to take on every challenge that comes their way, this noble composition brings an intensity to the warmth and vibrancy of the timeless original Boss Bottled signature. This is ultimately just Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum put in a golden bottle. Notes of apple, bergamot in the top, black pepper, cardamom, cinnamon in the mid, vetiver musk in the base. Only thing we're missing, I think, is the chestnut, but I'm sure it's in there. So not to dash your hopes of yet another Boss Bottled Flanker, this is Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum in a new bottle. The laziest thing that fragrance brands can do, and I love it. We need to amp up sales for the holiday season, Johnson. What have you got? Uh, Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum, but the bottle is gold. Promote that man. Now let's talk about the fragrance most people are gonna be interested in. It is Versace Eros Parfum. And with this one, Jeremy Fragrance actually got the bottle before most anybody even knew this stuff existed. It got sent to him, did a video on it. You can check that out on his channel. And then he broke the bottle on accident, I'm, I'm assuming, but yeah. This is absolutely not poking fun at Jeremy whatsoever but I do think it would have been really funny to see like somebody at Versace HQ. They're like, let's see what he thinks about it. He broke it. Oh, dang. Still though, super awesome. Super awesome. The only guy who would get that in and, and break that bottle right away. And I love it. So let's read about Versace Eros Parfum. Following the success of Eros Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum, and also Versace Flame, Eros Flame, Versace has recently released a parfum concentration of Eros, a unique aura that is sensual on the skin and extremely masculine. Eros being the god of love heralds notes of triumphant victories and flamboyant seduction. Eros is the scent of provocation and provides extreme contrast with delicate citrus and masculinity. The scent features an intense and lively freshness that reminisces on the old school style of cologne. Oh, some people just went, wait, Eros? Old school? The new parfum concentration features lemon, grapefruit, and pepper in order to project an aromatic intensity on the top. In the mid, geranium, lavender, and sage produce a crisp confectionery aroma, whilst cashmere, patchouli, vanilla, and vetiver consume the person smelling it, giving off a masculine sweetness. Maybe that's not the word you were looking for. Well, this Eros smells great. No! Ah! <laughs> Being consumed by Eros. And while it consumes you, a masculine sweetness is given off. So anybody around is like, what's that smell? Oh my God, that guy's being eaten by Eros Parfum. So this one's got a top of lemon, mandarin, elemi, and pepper, a made of geranium, lavender, and sage, and a base of benzoin, cashmere, and patchouli, vanilla, and vetiver. Now, this could be nothing. I've not smelled the fragrance, but that one little note that it reminisces on the old school style of cologne intrigues me because Dior Sauvage Elixir just recently came out and it has a definite throwback to 80s style fragrances in that scent profile. So, and, and this is me just reading the tea leaves and I could be completely wrong and that's fine, but if Eros Parfum comes out and it does have even a smidge of a throwback to, you know, an old style cologne, that'll be really intriguing to me because then I will start to wonder if, you know, history is repeating and we're gonna start having some fragrances come out that do legitimately have a strong resemblance to scents that came out decades ago. You know, almost as if everybody in the industry all at once said, okay, yeah, blue fragrances are cool. They're done, they're done. 80s, 80s is cool again. And then suddenly 
I am going to look big brain for saying Drakkar Noir is awesome. I'm playing, but at the same time, I'm not. My guesstimation, though, would be that this is what you would typically see from a fragrance house when they do an eau de toilette, an eau de parfum, and then a parfum, which is just an evolution of that fragrance getting a little more mature, a little less overtly sweet, you know, less bubblegummy sweet, less bash you over the head sweet, getting denser, richer, a little more depth. Probably the projection won't be quite as loud as the eau de toilette, though sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes it gets really loud, so we'll see. But my guess would be that it's going to follow the, the typical blueprint where it still has some of that Eros DNA in it, but now here's a more, you know, formal type Versace Eros as opposed to a really clubbing style fragrance that we had before. Obviously, I'm gonna buy it as soon as it's available and uh, I'll see how it is. I'm hoping that it's gonna be awesome. Whoa, it's me from the future coming into a video I already shot. So a quick update, a couple more fragrances that were announced in between when I filmed the video and today. Now the first one I don't really have a, a lot of information on. So EC Miyake just made a post on their Instagram. If you're on Instagram, you can go check it out about a new upcoming flanker, but they didn't give any notes. So it's called Nuit DC Bois Arctic, or would it be Nuit DC Bois Arctic? Yeah, that sounds better. All they put was a little picture of the fragrance, which you can see right here. Reminds me a little bit of the whole uh, design that they did for Blue Astral. Don't know if it's going to be similar to that one or not. And uh, they captioned it. The Nui DC saga continues with a new chapter, introducing Nui DC Bois Arctic, the new fragrance by Issey Miyake, inspired by the fascinating beauty of the Aurora Borealis. Magnetic, mysterious, intense. Are you ready to shake your senses? Get your senses, your nose, and I'll just shake them. So that one's coming up. And then we've also got Ghost in the Shell from Etat Libre d'Orange. And that is just the most confusing and completely awesome combination. I don't know if Ghost in the Shell ever popped into my mind like, hey, I wish they would take that and make a fragrance of it. That'd be cool. Now, a lot of you are not going to know what Ghost in the Shell is, and you should. You should. Ghost in the Shell now has, it's got manga, it's got TV series, it's got films, it's got video games. Let's read about it. Ghost in the Shell. By mixing biotech and natural materials, this perfume silently celebrates the wake of the future and also whispers of a day to come when humanity is reunited and organized. This perfume is the future. It comes to us from the 20th century. This perfume is the future. It comes to us from the 20th century. That's not the future. Oh, well, who cares? A new form of creation where nature and technology meet and complement each other. A fusion of liquid scented aqual TM. Is that a trademark? Aqual trademark? <laughs> and yuzu brings to life a citrusy metallic freshness. This is a metaphor for human flesh, as the velvety skin and juicy fruitiness of peach intertwine with hexyl acetate, an enigmatic ingredient derived from biotechnology with the scent of green melting pear. Now, like I said, absolutely love the idea of a ghost in the shell fragrance I, th I do think it's kind of funny that they're just really throwing in their technology technology biotechnology into uh their write-up but you know whatever it's got a top of yuzu pear and aquatic notes mid of jasmine lily of the valley and milky skin accord and a base of moss vanilla and orkinox no orkinox is not something from the lord of the rings that's kind of in the uh, Amber Woody and Broxony family of aroma chemicals. So, Ghost in the Shell, pretty cool, pretty psyched about that. Next, we need, uh, who knows, man, Akira, get some of that, maybe Uzumaki. Let's just, let's go all out, you know? Manga fragrances, all right. Manga and anime. Anime, it is not manga, it is manga. So, back to me in the past, it's kind of like uh, the Ghost in the Shell write-up. It's coming to you from the future, but not really. It's, 
it's all right. <laughs> so back to me in the past. We had some interesting write-ups today. I think that was the best part of, of all this, just these write-ups. And I fully encourage every single fragrance brand out there, just make your write-ups as insane as humanly possible. The more entertaining, the better. I know I was kind of taken aback by the Oud for Happiness write-up, but at the same time, that is probably my favorite fragrance write-up of the past millennia. There's just so much going on there. It is like a fragrance write-up that was written by an advanced Dungeons and Dragons wizard. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me with another This Week in Fragrance. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Let me know in the comments which fragrance you're most excited for. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.